welcome to Shellcat, the official podcast of the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel. Come along and discover the best of Southwest Florida. We are along the Gulf Coast, about two hours south of Tampa, here in Lee County, Florida. I'm your host, Jackie Parker, and here's your sound guy, Ray Saracino. Hello. And more specifically in this episode of Shellcast, we are at the JN Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge um, here on Sanibel Island. It's a beautiful morning here at the end of July, and our very special guest is Ranger Tony Westland. Ranger Tony is going to give us a tour of the Indigo Trail here at the JN Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge on Sanibel Island. The refuge consists of over 6,400 acres and was renamed in 1967 after J. Norwood Ding Darling, a two-time Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist for the Des Moines Register. He was also a visiting snowbird to Sanibel and Captiva. Darling's cartoons, a mix of conservation and political messages, were syndicated throughout the nation. In this episode, You'll hear our footsteps as we walk along the trail made of crushed shells. It's low impact and good on the knees. Ranger Tony takes us out to Wildlife Education Boardwalk, and along the way, we learn the difference between poison ivy and Virginia creeper. And on the Wildlife Education Boardwalk, we'll see all the scat boxes on the bridge. Don't worry, they're carvings of scat so they don't smell. And this is audio. This is the Indigo Trail, and it's named the Indigo Trail after a snake. The Eastern Indigo Snake is actually the largest non-venomous snake in all of North America. So let me repeat, non-venomous. <laughs> and it's large-bodied. It's named Indigo because it looks purple, but it's, you know, it's, it's black, but it's a purpley sheen. It's got brown under its chin, but it's a heavy-bodied snake and they're threatened. There's not many left. And so we're working hard, just like as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service with the Endangered Species Act, we're working hard with our biologists to monitor all different species, and this is one of them. But non-venomous, important to our ecosystem. You know, a lot of people don't think of snakes as something important, and they are. And we actually not only protect a lot of the birds we've seen today, and you know, the alligators and the manatees, we even protect things like the Sanibel Island rice rat. It is a rat, yes, a rat, that lives here on Sanibel, and it's the only place in the world in which this type of rice rat is. It's got webbed feet, and it dives into the water, and it's an amazing creature. So there's so many different types of wildlife that we're working to protect because we don't know the implications if something was to disappear. So it's really important the people come out, they learn, they enjoy, um, and that we keep these ecosystems just as pristine as they were before, and so that we have them for future generations. Tony, let's talk about alligators. Yes. And crocodiles. We've got both. I know, what's up with that? Is that amazing? Yes. We have, in, in, in our free visitor and education center, you can actually see the skeleton of one. We had a crocodile that recreated on Sanibel, lived here, not recreated, she <laughs> lived here. Um, she was spotted in 1980, and she lived here for almost 30 years. Um, is that even right? Let me start that again. No, that's good. <laughs> is that good. even the right amount of math? But anyway, we had a crocodile. We said she was the northernmost crocodile. We're actually finding that ranges of crocodiles are going further north which can maybe be an indication of what's happening with our environment, mm -hmm. with global climate change. Um, so this is why science is so important in biology and studying wildlife and how we affect wildlife and the ecosystem. But our crocodile lived here on Sanibel, was a resident for years. Um, she did pass away in 2010 and her skeleton is on display in our free visitor and education center, which is so cool. We have a display about crocodilians alligators, crocodiles, gharials, and caimans. They make up this really cool whole family of reptiles, and we do have both species on Sanibel. We have alligators and crocodiles. We have to watch as we walk down the Indigo Trail. Look at all these tiny holes. Yep. And as we walk, you may see little fiddler crabs and a giant claw and a baby claw. They're heading down into these holes. It's just kind of fun. Sometimes I walk out here, there's so many crabs, it's almost deafening. Like, it's, it's loud. But there are 
feet actually have caused them to go down into the hole. It's kind of fun to watch. So the Indigo Trail is two miles out, two miles back. Um, you can do a loop in your bike or you can hike it. It's a nice four mile loop. Um, crushed shell. You can take strollers on here, bikes. I mean, it's it's a nice impacted shell. Good for running on your joints. It is. Right here, what do you think you see? You're walking right over top of it. Um, a, a trail. Yes, it's called an alligator slide. Yes. Right? Yes. A lot of times you might not see anything, but you can actually see the the tra you know, the drag mm -hmm. of the alligator's tail. Mm -hmm. Look for signs of animals when you're out in nature. Here's a, a prime example where we've got resident alligators that do kind of the same loop every morning or every afternoon. Very important as we're talking about alligators, keeping your distance, do not feed them. It takes, unfortunately, only one time to feed them, to interact. You think, you know, don't throw things at them. Definitely don't feed them, but it changes their behavior and that becomes a safety issue, not only for the alligator that needs to be removed, but for the people that are out here. So, so important and a lot of people get it. People that come to Sanibel in Southwest Florida, they love nature, they understand those things, but pass that information along is what we tell people so we all can enjoy nature safely. So the difference between alligators and crocodiles, the freshwater, saltwater. Yeah, so right? that's probably the easiest thing is crocodiles are in saltwater, alligators are in fresh. But just when I say that, alligators, we've seen them spotted actually going down. They'll go down the beach, get into the ocean to clean themselves off, we think. But they can't tolerate the salt. Crocodiles can. Crocodiles have a salt gland on their tongue, and that's how they get rid of the salt. So they actually are a saltwater creature. They're about the same size, I mean, a little bit different. Crocodiles are lighter color, while alligators are darker, almost black, you know, dark green, with that snout. Uh -huh. The alligator has a rounded snout, like a shovel, like your foot, you know, rounded, while a crocodile is V-shaped, it's very pointed. Okay, Tony, we just walked through this path on Indigo Trail yep. where it smells like hard-boiled egg. There it is. That sulfur smell from the rotting detritus. The fish food, right? The nursery of the sea. That's exactly what you just smelled. All right. All right. It's a good smell, right? Well, I had one for breakfast, so I'm not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm, Tasty rotting detritus. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So, springtime, this, I mean, this is a great hike and bike any time of the year but in springtime we have nesting birds all along the indigo trail and all the way out to where we're going which is the web the wildlife education boardwalk it's three tenths of a mile so it's a quick walk from the visitor center from the free parking and you can walk out here um, but be on the lookout but yeah in the springtime nesting birds are really fun to come out to watch them we watch the whole process happen Green herons, tricolored herons, ospreys, yellow crowns, and hingas. We've had up to five different species of nesting birds out here. So if you visit in the spring, you always want to ask, and we're pushing out information, it's baby bird season, look for nesting birds. Ask you, without touching it, do you guys know what that is? Is it poison ivy? Yeah. Okay. So something to think about, a lot of times I'm from the north, people come from the north, poison ivy is a slow growing plant up north. Yeah. Poison ivy is native. It can grow all over. So you just want to, you want to learn, you know, three leaves, let it be. It's, um, this is definitely poison ivy and people get it mixed up with Virginia creeper. Here's Virginia creeper with five leaves. They look a lot alike. So just learn, but the best thing is to not touch any of it. Um, because we do have a lot of poison ivy. We don't spray any chemicals, we remove it uh, mechanically. So try to keep the poison ivy from hanging over the edge um, so people don't walk into it. So. Got a bunch Hello. of bicyclists. You might want to stop at the boardwalk, it's nice. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> One, wow, two, this is a whole crew of bikers. Hi everybody! Hello. Hi! <laughs>
So as you Dozen. can see, quick <laughs> trip to the Wildlife Education Boardwalk, also called the Web, built out of recycled plastic. Another success story of our friends group, uh, the Ding Darling Wildlife Society and donors. This was actually built to connect the Sanibel School to the refuge. And what's great is the visitors can come and enjoy it too. So school kids access it from the other side when they're in school and we access it from this side and everybody can use it. Made out of recycled boards, love it. I actually thought of this idea when I was potty training my second. We weren't seeing much out here and I thought all we're seeing is piles of scat. And scat is a really fun, cool way to be able to see the health of the ecosystem, what's using it, what are they eating. And we were finding piles so I've got our artist that helps us on a lot of projects. Like, have you ever carved scat before? And he was like, you mean poop? And I was like, yeah. He was like, no. I'm like, would you do it? He's like, yeah. So we sent him samples, pictures, and he carved this really cool, we call them scat panels, scat boxes. No smell or anything on <laughs> this one. And then you can see Bob who cat. left. Bobcat scat. Yeah. And if you look carefully, a lot of people don't notice it till they're out. We actually have their tracks leading to the scat. And he dremeled the tracks into the boardwalk. Oh, wow. Um, because I can't stand it when you've got like paint. Animals don't mm -hmm. walk in paint. Mm -hmm. But they do leave their tracks and mm -hmm. sometimes they're hard to see. So yeah, who so do you think this is impression. with the alligator? Or the el I just said it. <laughs> who do you think this is? Yes. And it leads right to... An how often do you see alligator scat? They spend most of their time in the water, right? They lot. love to eat fish. They don't love to eat people. Um, they keep their distance, but they do. And I found, it was my friend, Lisa Andrews. She's a park ranger down at Big Cypress. She took this picture for me. Um, of actually fresh alligator scat. So pretty cool, right? Just a fun way to keep people learning. And let me tell you, it doesn't matter if they're this big or this big. People love to learn about nature and, and what a fun way to do it, but with scat. It's very cool. It is one of the white ibis scat. Yes, and that is actually the only one which is a pellet. Birds cough up, owls cough up a pellet, and you can undigested material. Hair, claws, Ibis do it too, and they left all these pellets all over the boardwalk. So we took a picture right from here. Yeah. Look at the claw in there. Yeah. This is actually barf. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you. And that's how they get rid of the waste? That's how they, yeah, the undigest used materials come up and they cough it up in a pellet. And You've got to embrace the gross. <laughs> embrace the gross. Because I don't know of many scat sculptures. I can't say that. No. We might be the first. Yeah. We always like to be the first out here at Ding Darling. That's cool. It is quiet. But I'm telling you, in springtime, five different nests. We watch them right from here laying the eggs, the babies being born, and then them fledging. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable how close nature can be to you. Um, and to, to watch the whole life process is, I mean, you can't beat it. And to, yeah, you can't beat it. So, so we're wrapping up our tour with, with Tony Westland and thank you, Ranger Tony, so much. Uh, thank we you. learned so much and it's just beautiful to come out here in the morning and see nature when it's a little cooler. Yes. And there's you know, <laughs> bicyclists and you know, photographers and so many people out taking advantage. Yeah, that's what's so great about nature is there's no boundaries when it comes to, you can meet people of all walks of life, all different careers. The one thing we all have in common is the appreciation for our health, for the wildlife um, and getting out. And so there's so many different ways to do it also. So we invite people to come out social distance, clean your hands, you know, only come out if you're feeling well, but get out into nature. If it's not here at this National Wildlife Refuge, state parks and Audubon centers, any part of nature, nature's in your backyard. It's um, anywhere you can, you can find it. It's so, it's so accessible here in Southwest Florida to get out and enjoy. So we hope to see you all out at Ding Darling soon. Thank you, Patty. Thanks. That's gonna do it for this episode of Shellcast. We've got two more episodes from Ding Darling to share with you. In another episode, Ranger Tony Westland gives us a tour of Wildlife Drive, 
and in another episode, Ranger Tony tells us about the plans for the new Wildlife on Wheels Mobile Classroom and Visitor Center, nicknamed The Wow. We also learned how Ranger Tony wound up here at Ding Darling, and she gives us a tour of the award-winning learning laboratories. For more information about JN Ding Darling's National Wildlife Refuge here on Sanibel Island, visit the Fish and Wildlife website, and they have um, a lot of information on the refuge. There are several apps to download that will prepare you to get you ready, um, quizzes and you know, bird guides, all sorts of great stuff. And also a reminder, Wildlife Drive is closed on Friday. Thank you always to Ray Saracino for your excellent tech, and thanks to our colleague, Courtney Hersel for the theme music. Shellcast, the podcast of the Beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel, is produced by the Lee County Visitor and Convention Bureau in Fort Myers, Florida. Shellcast is available wherever fine podcasts are downloaded and at fortmyers-sanibel.com. If you have any questions or a suggestion for an episode of Shellcast, please email us at shellcastthepodcast at gmail.com. And Shellcast is also available on Instagram at shellcastthepodcast. I'm Jackie Parker. Thanks for listening to Shellcast, and we'll catch you again next time.